those roads have actually been closed now. That's because of the weather we've just had. The only viable option is the Sturt Highway. I am not stoked about that. So I left when it was still a little bit dark, but the sun was starting to rise um, and I cruised on the highway to Lake Bonnie. I had a look at the sky when I was at Barmara and decided that it looked pretty okay. So I decided to continue on to Berry and halfway to the next town, uh, there was definitely a sudden shift in the clouds and I started seeing this like dark, angry mass um, coming to the side of me and was like, oh, there's the storm, that's where it is. I got here and heard the first thunder rumble and was like, oh, good timing. Um, I got breakfast and then I came out and it was pouring and thundering and lightning hard. Uh, and I was like, okay, it was a good decision to stop here. Today, it actually hasn't rained at all, I don't think, but I do see some dark clouds coming again. So it might uh, storm overnight, but today I did basically nothing. I didn't even really explore Berry except for go um, to the lookout tower. I napped and cleaned stuff um, and also planned what I'm doing for the next couple of days because I've had to change my route. We are here in Berry. And we're going to Renmark or Paringa. Um, so I've got some little side trips here, which hopefully are good enough to ride on my gravel bike. Um, now I was originally planning to do this road. So I decided maybe it's a good idea actually to call the Renmark Visitor Center and ask them about the quality of the roads. And I'm very glad I did that. They told me that it's renowned for being quite sandy, which I did not know. Um, so I was like, look, that sounds like not something for this bike to undertake, but we've also just had a major rainstorm. So I talked to them about, about potentially going through here, um, through New South Wales, and then going over to Wentworth, which is um, here. I got a call a couple of hours later from the Renmark Visitor Centre saying that those roads have actually been closed now. That's because of the weather we've just had. So the last thing that's left, the only viable option is the Sturt Highway. I am not stoked about that. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else to say. Um, I just have to take this highway. Um, I've been told that there is a, a sealed shoulder for some of it. I will be taking my cleats off of my uh, bike shoes for that section of the highway. Um, and then once I get to Moringa North, which is actually about 70 kilometers on the highway. Once I get here, then turning onto this road, and then that's like a secondary, but still sealed road. There's a campsite here, um, and there's a water stop here. I ended up only getting to Paringa today, which is around 40 kilometers. I took a scenic route through the Murray River National Park around Lyrup, um, and that was on unsealed roads, which uh, turned out when I got halfway through them, had a lot of muddy sections and some really big puddles. And so it was pretty hard to get through them. I dragged my bike through some of the puddles and then a bunch of mud got 
all over it and clogged the wheels and stuff like that. So um, now I need to clean my bike um, and my cleats as well. There's mud all over my shoes. The road basically turned into a shallow river at one point and I had to do some bush bashing. But yeah, Paringa is really cute. And um, there's a pool and there's not really that many people here. Um, like there's a pool at the caravan park. So tomorrow I'm gonna try and get all the way to Weramal and see you then. The first 60 kilometers of today was on the Sturt Highway. Um, it was actually, it was nice in some sections where there weren't any cars passing me, there were some nice views. Um, but yeah, on the South Australia side, there was like half a lane of a sealed shoulder and then another half a lane of an unsealed shoulder. I decided that I would stay in the unsealed shoulder. Unfortunately, that did not continue into Victoria. Um, there was just that sort of half a sealed shoulder, uh, not ideal. I also got beeped at a few times and I wasn't really sure why, cause I'm like very high vis, I've got reflective stripes on my bag. So I'm a little bit confused about what they were trying to say. <laughs> cause I don't want to be on the highway either. After 60 kilometers, the Meringa Red Cliffs Road turn off came and I turned onto it and it was great. Barely any traffic. Went past the Meringa Pioneer Village and I went in to have a look around the various buildings. And after that, got into Warrnambool. Tomorrow will be my last day staying like around civilization, I guess. And after that, I don't expect to see any stores or anything for like four days. Okay, so riding from Warrnambool to Redcliffs, very boring day. I rode 60 kilometers in a straight line um, and the views were the same the entire way. And that was my day. Yesterday, I started by cycling to the Redcliffs lookout. There's a lot of trees quite close to the fence line. And so I couldn't really like see the view past them. You can give it a miss, to be honest. I really like the Big Bend lookout a lot more, um, which is actually quite far away from where I am right now. Um, but yeah, that one was very nice. <laughs> then I turned onto some dirt tracks that follow the Murray River and it was sandy in some places. And on the first bit, I, cause I'd put my cleats back on for the previous day, it hit some sand. I couldn't tell that it was sandy and I 
didn't unclip, fell off, but it was onto sand, so I didn't really hurt myself. I had decided that if I fell off one more time, I would take my cleats off and keep them off for the rest of my journey. My verdict now is that cleats for bikepacking, not a great idea. I'm not sure how other people do it. After the roads uh, hugging the Murray River, um, I ended up going past some private property uh, roads where um, I was intending to go through them. Um, but yeah, I couldn't because I could see that they were actually on someone's property. So I just had to, you know, keep going. And I found a new route on Google Maps. Definitely like a sandy track. Came through to Mangalok, which has a caravan park and a pub slash general store, which I was very surprised by because I did not expect to see a like proper a town with like some sort of facilities um, until Swan Hill. It was getting pretty toasty around that time already. It was like 2 p.m. and it was 35 degrees. And so I was like, I'm going to come into the pub and then came to this campsite, which is like the turnoff for it is just 100 metres down the road. And I thought, looked like a perfect place to spend a rest day, except that this rest day today that um, I've been trying to enjoy, <laughs> it reached 40 degrees. And um, yeah, so I was getting a bit hot and sweaty. It was very sunny before. Um, I've spent the last three hours at the pub <laughs> and I came out and uh, well, it's about 32 degrees now, so that's all right. And the sun's sort of gone away, so it's not as bad because there's not sun everywhere. But the morning was still nice. I had some dehydrated porridge and tea, um, and I was using my sleeping pad to sit on because there are lots of ants everywhere, including bull ants. I did get bitten by a bull ant or stung or whatever it is that they do. So that was not the smartest idea, but I guess that's that's what's happened. Um, maybe I shouldn't be putting it directly on the ground. Had to break out the repair kit. 